Prior to insertion, the surgeon must take care to completely remove the disc nucleus and end plate cartilage. A complete nucleus removal with special attention to removing the disc material contralateral and ipsilateral to the annulus axis will aid in proper placement of the interfused device. Use of the nucleus probe will aid in determining proper cleanout. Interfused device height and AP length chosen preoperatively should be confirmed using the device sizers supplied. Final height selection is determined when the sizer appears to fit securely in the disc space but does not require the use of the slap hammer for removal. Before a segment is inserted, a threaded inserter must be fitted to the posterior threaded hole of the segment until it is flush with the back of the module. Take care not to over tighten the threaded inserter, especially for the A segment. The A segment is inserted into the disc space such that the serrated edges contact the vertebral end plates and the curved portion of the segment is oriented toward the contralateral side of the disc space. Once inserted, the tail of the segment and the threaded inserter will be protruding from the disc space. To make room for the preceding B segment, remove the threaded inserter. Then use the positioning lever to move the A segment contralaterally. Insert the tail of the A segment into the anterior slot of the B segment. While holding on to the threaded inserter, slide the B segment along the tail of the A segment until it is completely in the disc space and aligned with the A segment. Once the segment has been implanted, the tail traction tool can be used to fully engage the A and B segments. It is very important that the modules be parallel to one another when the B segment engages the A segment to prevent accidental removal of the tail from the A segment. The B segment is properly seated when the inner segment snap lock has been felt and or heard to engage. Once successful engagement is confirmed, unscrew and remove the tail traction tool and the threaded inserter from the B segment. The A segment tail is then removed using the tail removal tool. Slide the tail removal tool over the tail of the A segment so the distal tip of the tool is contacting the implanted segments. The end of the A segment tail should be aligned with the proximal end surface of the tail removal tool. If it is not, this is a sign that the segments may not be properly engaged. Once the tail removal tool is in proper position, twist the tail removal tool one complete rotation to remove the tail from the segment. When the tail separates from the segment, hold the metal tail end against the flat area of the handle and remove the tail removal tool from the incision. With the tail of the A segment removed, move the combined segments A and B contralaterally using one of the positioning levers in order to make room for the insertion of the next segment. The remaining segments are attached and inserted into the disc space in the same fashion as the B segment, followed by tail removal. The remainder of the demonstration will be presented at three times normal speed. Most patients are expected to require five segments, utilizing two additional B segments and the final C segment. Special attention should be focused on ensuring that the C segment is properly aligned with the insertion tool when threading it into the segment to avoid cross-threading. Implantation of the interfused device is complete when all desired segments have been interlocked, completely inserted, and all segment tails have been removed.